Benson's legacy is the closing of the gap between R&B vocals and instrumental jazz. Any opportunity that I have to make music with George Benson or for George Benson, I'm going to jump at the chance. He's a fantastic singer, amazing guitar player. With George, I think it's just he was just born to be one of the great performers of all time. You know, I'm from Birmingham, Alabama, and um, growing up in my household, you know, these are the records you heard. You know, the On Broadways and the Give Me the Night Masquerade. So, you know, I remember being a little boy, and these are the records that you know my parents played. So, you know, being able to uh, hear these records now, be a part of a project, you know, with these big records, this was like a time when I could. Call my mom, you know, and say, hey, you know, I'm working on this project that has something to do with George Benson. George Benson is just a tall living legend. Excited to be a part of this project um, because I know I know that there is a, a respect and a relationship between Unam and George Benson. It makes me very very proud to be a part of a quality project that pays homage to his work and. I love the fact that most of the tracks and the general feel of the project is fresh and exciting, but it also um, pays homage to his work in a way that it's not pushing the envelope too far. It, it still keeps the essence of, of uh, it honors it honors the work of George Benson as opposed to trying to make some other statements around it and just using his creativity. We're honoring his creativity. And uh, I'm very proud to be a part of that. I've always loved the melody of I Just Want to Hang Around You. I think that is an awesome melodic, uh, melodic song. George Benson's uh, vocal influence is very strong with me because as a child, as a young man, I didn't even relate to him as as a non-vocalist, as, as an instrumentalist. I related to him purely as a vocalist because that was my personal experience. So to me, he was a singer that played guitar. I know the rest of the world probably sees it the opposite. George Benson's signature solo style with him singing over the notes. I remember the impact that had on me, uh, thinking, wow, that's uh, scat on another level to me. Uh, vocal improv times 10. And I remember wondering if I could ever sing like that. No one that sings R&B and that's involved in the record business in the R&B world can say that he was not a viable R&B and pop artist. So there's not many people that you can say that about uh, equally. And uh, he's one of the first and actually the only one that pops in my mind right away that I can say has equal strength on both sides. 
was a boy. A very he's singing, his tone, uh, his phrasing, incredible. I mean, so I used to mimic him, you know. Uh, there's a lot of joys up in me as well. Um, classics like Masquerade, of course, you know, Reason, you know, and just. So I mean, for me, he was he was really one of those people who put us helped put a stamp on me that I probably should speak more of in, you know, as far as the, from a singing standpoint, you know, because I, I listen to a lot of uh, horn players and guitars, you know, from, like melodies, and he's definitely, you know, he's a trailblazer, you know. Um, hopefully I'll meet him one day, you know. Love you, man. I've loved you from afar. I love you from records. You know, you all, you know, your musical DNA is in me as well. So, thank you, you know. Uh, most fondest memory with George is opening for him right outside of Chicago um, and if I'm not mistaken I had just gotten into town I had to call ahead and they had to have uh, a police escort for me to get from Midway out to where the gig was and uh, I had my bag in the back and I grabbed my bag and changed my clothes and went out and did my set George didn't know that I had just come in a few minutes before then. And he walked on stage and he told the audience, he said, it is a privilege and an honor to make music with Phil Perry any chance I get. And that's the kind of cat that George wants. Well, I see, I like the Give Me the Night album. Mm -hmm. And of that yep. recording, I like Turn Down the Lamplight the most. I think it's one of the more poetically romantic stories and backdrops you could ever play. Not only his playing performances, but his singing performances just are so spot on. He's such a consummate professional. May I be blessed enough to live as long? and sound as good George <laughs> Hey George, gotcha! It's a big honor and a privilege to be part of UNAM's tribute to the great George Benson, my favorite guitar player out of all, and the biggest source of inspiration for my uh, musical journey and for my uh, career as a guitar player. When I was 15 or something, I heard George Benson for the first time. It was a friend of mine who had one of his albums, one of his organ jazz albums from the 60s called It's Uptown. And I listened to it and I just loved it. And after that, I started listening to George's stuff in the 70s, the more disco, funk kind of stuff, and the 80s pop, then the, the soul R&B during the 90s, up until now, everything is done. I'm really happy to uh, make a tribute to George together with uh, UNAM and a few of the musicians that uh, played with uh, George. So um, the song we're doing is Weekend in the Lay, a song that was recorded on George's uh, live album. So um, I hope you like it, and I really had a great time doing it. I recall when I first started singing, one of my favorite George Benson songs was uh, I Just Want to Hang Around. Oh, okay. Right? And I remember singing that song, and when I sang the song, I remember thinking how difficult that song was to sing. 
I didn't realize how high he could sing mm -hmm. when I sang that song because I sing pretty high. And when I sang it, I thought, oh, he spoke. I mean, his rage was pretty incredible. But I mean, uh, George Benson's voice is one of the all time great voices of all time. And one of the consistent vocals of all time. If you've been on the road like I have with him, you see that uh, what we've done in the jazz world, we do gigs every, almost every night. Mm -hmm. And he's one of the most consistent vocalists that I've been around ever. People underestimate, they always think of George as a, as a guitarist, jazz guitarist, but George is one of the great vocalists of all time. For example, when you're in Europe, you play these festivals and they're late at night, they start late, 11, 12 o'clock at night, uh, you get done 1, 2 o'clock in the morning, and then sometimes they'll have this jam session back at the hotel. Well, George would, would come back and he'd be down at the jam session all night long. In the early days, I'd say 91 was when I started with him. In the 90s, we'd have to be up, lobby call would be 5.30, 6 o'clock. So George would be down in the jam session till all hours of the night. I, I don't know if he had a couple hours of sleep. We're all dragging, we get up, we gotta be down to the lobby, 5.30, 4 to 6, just dragging. And uh, we're getting ready to leave, and, and George, every, every, every day, he would come in, 5.30, 6 o'clock in the morning, and the first thing he'd come in and he's just singing like a bird. And you're just going, but how in the world? He was at the jam session all night. He's just going, I mean, he's just he's just one of the seven wonders uh, of the world. And he's just a, an incredible uh, talent, and I, I was just fortunate. You know, George and I have not actually worked in the studio that much. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of odd, actually. Uh, but we've, we've always worked on the same, a lot of the same shows. You know, so I passed him in the night or either I see him in the bar. So speaking about the bar, one, one interesting thing that happened, I have, I have to tell you guys about, is, is actually uh, I was doing a DVD in 2009 in, uh, at the Montreal Jazz Festival. And I was playing after George because I wanted to play for three, four hours just to get as much music in as I possibly could. You know, and what happened is the show went long. You know, it was 3.30 in the morning when I finally had the tune I wanted George to play on. So I said, ladies and gentlemen, the great George Benson. Ah. George? George? He was at the bar with Quincy Jones across the street, you know. So uh, that's 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 my that's my one George Bush a funny story. We laughed about it afterwards. We had a drink together. Uh, but George and I had done a lot of playing off stage, even in Montreux. You know, I can remember specifically one night playing backstage with George with Shaka Khan playing drums. Oh. And me on keyboards and George on guitar. And I don't know who played bass. It might have been throw a clue or somebody, I don't know. But it was the weirdest thing Shaka was like. She was keeping a pretty good beat uh -huh. for a while. Yeah, there's a picture of it somewhere around here. Oh, wow. Yeah. George uh, just uh, did the recorded um, some roads and solo on the this masquerade for that uh, George Benson trigger album I'm doing. And uh, first of all, George, uh, would like to thank you so much for that, for your kindness, for that opportunity, and all the great vibes you're putting on that project. Yeah, man, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, it is. And you let me play what I want. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing. Glad you're doing this, man. Yeah, thank you. It's gonna be so a great much. project. Thank you so much. All right, thank you, man. Thanks for calling me and asking me to do this. He's the he's the man. back is, is Tupac or even further than that I mean, because you have to understand that the type of music that George Benson you know, does that is the predecessor to hip-hop 
So, you know, when you go into dance music, that was, that was the first hip hop, these dance beats. And so, if you think of from a Kanye West to a, um, a Jay-Z to even when Ja Rule was, was doing his thing, even 50 Cent, when you think about these guys and you listen to these dance records, they all have records that resemble the type of music that George Benson was doing. So it's just, you know, imitation is the highest form of flattery. So you, you, you can hear it, it's filtered through all of the mainstream music. Because I mean, you have to understand this music was was not just, like I said, not just the hot record for, you know, that the year or whatnot. But it, there are records that are bigger, you know. And when you think about On Broadway, when you think about Give Me The Night, when you think about Masquerade, these are records that if you say right now, have you heard of this record? And then a youngster might not know the name. But if you start singing on Broadway, they're gonna go, oh yeah, 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 I know that. And so that those type of records go far beyond just, you know, flash in the pan. They kind of define um, an era and beyond, and that's what that's what it did for hip hop. What I've tried to do with this project is to do a condensé or like a best of George Benson knowing that his career is more than 60 years long and that was not easy because George has always mixed a lot of different music just like jazz, pop, R&B, soul, funk, contemporary jazz and that's what I've tried to do on that album and as well try to uh, capture the energy and keep the essence of George's music on that particular album. But before starting any music, the first thing I did it was to uh, call George and let him know that I was about to start the George Benson tribute album and to ask him if I could have his blessing before I start anything. So I called George after the usual blah blah blah. I asked him a question. I said, George, I'm about to start the George Benson Tribute album and I would like to know if I can have your blessing. And his answer was beyond any of my expectations. You reply to me, man, obviously you have my blessing, but anyway, whatever you're gonna do, it just gonna sound fantastic. I was so relieved that then I've started to work on music. I've been so fortunate to do a tribute album to my hero, George Benson, that features some of my others musical heroes such as George Duke, Marcus Miller, Paul Jackson Jr., Patrice Russian, Ronnie Foster, Phil Perry, Stockley Williams and many more. Everyone was really really excited to be a part of this project. When I asked them and told them it was about the George Benson tribute album, they all said yes and said they were really excited to be a part of it. George is really, really, really excited about the project. He even did, uh, wrote the liner notes on the album uh, where he's uh, sharing his thoughts about me, uh, his friends and musicians that are on the album and the, the project by itself. great musical joint. It took me two years to complete the project and now I'm so excited to share it with you with the world. I really hope that all the George Benson's fans all around the world is gonna love that album. I did put all my heart and soul in it and George himself approved it. I believe that we all did pay the great to George.